Section 8.2, ionic bonding. If you take chlorine gas, which is one of the World War I trench gases that killed and blinded so many people, and you put solid sodium in it, you get a ridiculously violent, uh, very exothermic reaction. And at the end, I don't know if you can see this, you got little powdery salt that is flaking off and falling to the bottom of the vessel. Okay, falling through the, through the gas to the bottom and you're getting solid little flakes of salt. Salt is, in this case, sodium. The sodium is the purple. The sodium and the green is the chlorine. And so they're forming a matrix where everyone is touching every other one. So all the purples um, are touching greens and all the greens are touching purples. And they're trying to stay away from each other because all the greens are negative and all the purples are positive. What's happened is that they are attached together by electrostatic forces, just like static electricity. So negatives and positives attract, and so they're in kind of a matrix. Well, this is very exothermic. You're getting tons of, of energy back when you turn chlorine gas and sodium metal into salt. Salt's way more stable than chlorine gas would be or, or sodium metal would be. I mean, you can put table salt a salt shaker and put it on the, the counter, but chlorine gas is poison uh, and uh, sodium metal blows up in water. Very, very dangerous. Both of them dangerous. I can get, lay my hands on a little bit of sodium, but I cannot get chlorine because it's a weapon. <laughs> so what's happening here? You've got a first column uh, metal here with a 3S1 uh, valence shell. So you've got one valence shell way out here. So here's his inner core el electrons. You've got 1S2, 2S2, 2P6. So that means you have 10 on the core and then one on the outside. So you've got 11 protons. You've got a two electron. You've got an eight in the next shell. And then you've got one by itself. Okay. It has... Um, a very low ionization energy, remember, so it's easy to steal. Um, so you can steal it off pretty, pretty cheap. And then the 3P5 three, the three is chlorine. Chlorine has a very high um, electron affinity. Remember, it, it's easy to, to steal an electron if you're chlorine. In fact, you're going to give back 350 kilojoules per mole just to get that electron because it wants to be stable just like argon. Now, when the sodium has given away this 3S electron, then what you see is that it's just like erasing this. Now your outside shell is, not, is no longer 1, but your outside shell is 8. And that has a full octet, and that's very stable. Likewise, the chlorine is no longer 3s2, 3p5, which is 7 in its outer shell. It's stolen an extra one, so now it's 3s2, 3p6, which now has a full octet, and now it's stable. Now, the, the attraction it is now capable, because you have, you have a positive and a negative ion in close proximity, and now the electrostatic forces take over, and the electron and the chlorine are brought together in a matrix. So you have sodium, chlorine, sodium, chlorine, sodium, chlorine, where all the sodiums are attached to chlorines and all the chlorines are attached to sodiums, and it's kind of like a grid work of sodium and chloride. That's why you don't actually have a molecule of salt. You have a grain of salt, which could be zillions of formula units of an NaCl, you could have a piece of salt as big as a mountain, truly. So, in a little bit of an easier schematic, I've got one outer shell electron, and I have seven outer shell electrons. We have a transference of that electron. So now, there's no electrons here because the eight that it now has were all inside electrons. So there's no outer shell anymore. And now, because I'm one more 
uh, positive than electron than negative, I'm now a sodium positive, sodium cation. And then now that I have stolen this one, now I have eight in my outer shell. So that's why that there's brackets here. This is showing these are all valence shell electrons. There's eight, and that's one extra electron. So you have a negative. Now that you have positive and negative, you have a detraction. So why is it exothermic? Why is there tons of, inf of energy released when you make salt? Because if you look, it shouldn't happen. You've got 495 uh, kilojoules per mole of input energy just to rip off that electron on the sodium. Okay, so it costs 495 kilojoules for every mole of sodium that you rip off. And you get back 349 kilojoules per mole for every mole of, of chlorine atoms that steals. So you get, you get a refund of 349, but it costs almost 500 kilojoules to rip off one sodium. So you shouldn't be able to get tons of energy back. It, it should actually take a little bit of energy to make salt, but it doesn't. There must be a piece of missing information except for ionization energy and electron affinity. There must be some other explanation why salt, and most of the salts, will give you energy back when you make them. It turns out that we've already learned it in physics, and that is that if you have two charges that are separated by a distance, it takes an energy to either put them together if they're the same charge, or to separate them if they're opposite charges. So the lattice energy in a salt is the energy it takes to separate all of the charged particles in a grain of salt in one mole of, say, an ACL or some other salt. That's the lattice energy in an ionic solid. Well, if it takes a certain amount of energy to pull them apart, then that means that you're going to get an, a certain amount of energy back just by putting them together. Imagine that I've got two magnets separated, and then I just, and, and, it's, and I'm tensing up trying to keep them separated because they want to attract. If I just let it happen, it happens automatically. The north goes to the south, and it just, the two magnets stick together uh, immediately. That's exactly what's happening with the sodium and chloride. As soon as you get sodium ion, as soon as you get chlorine ion, they stick together electrically, like electrostatically, like socks in the dryer, and you get a ton of ener energy back. So it actually takes a little bit of energy to make the sodium and the chlorine. It takes a lot of energy to pull the electron off the sodium. It takes a little bit of uh, you get some energy back by, by adding the electron to the chlorine, but once you have a sodium and a chloride, now, as soon as you just let them fall together, they're going to release, it's exothermic to put them together. They just fall together naturally because the charges attract each other. So the lattice energy increases with the charge. So the more charge you have, the more lattice energy you have, which means the if you have bigger charges that are making these salts, you're going to get even more exothermic reactions than even the sodium chloride.